Hi there. Yeah, I rushed again. Um, yesterday I was shopping with the wife at a uh, hardware store, and uh, I happened to see these sacks of cement on a pallet for just over seven bucks a sack, and that was pretty cheap. They were sacks of bird feed, and I've been thinking about, you know, making a bird feeder for a few years now. I just haven't gotten around to it. I made one in France that I uh, really like. I've got a picture of it uh, in this video. It, it was pretty intricate in a, in a, in a sense. Um, I'll talk more about that later. <clears throat> but with all that I've got going on, I just never could get around to it. And, uh, I've got the five posts at my cafe mezzanine now, and I have the last two cross members put in there. Uh, but they ha take a little bit of extra work. So I'm just going to take a little break here. And I thought I would, uh, when I got the sack of the bird feed, I figured, you know what? I'll throw one together tomorrow, which is today. So I'm going to the shop today to uh, build one of these things. And uh, I just uh, thought I would, uh, uh, you know, upload this thing uh, because it's going to be a very simple, uh, straightforward design made with scraps I can find in my shop and uh, nothing really uh, heavy duty as far as uh, joinery and all that just something simple decent not going to be you know trashy but you know very simple straight cuts uh, nothing you know really uh, you know super sophisticated anyone can do this even with just hand tools and uh, you know again hopefully uh, you know my videos are geared to you know, the, the person who's just starting out, maybe, you know, wanting to learn some technique, basic techniques and, you know, get in the shop and make you know, little, little, little things or whatever, uh, be it a young man or young, young lady or, you know, older people like I am, uh, retired, and still want to do something with their hands, you know. So, um, with that, uh, I'll, uh, get going. I just have a couple of sh sh photos there and then I'll give some, uh, uh background on them and, uh, Let's see uh, what transpires uh, by the end of the day. Huh? Okay, here we go. And here we have the first of uh, three photos. Didn't take a lot of them, but uh, pay attention to that angle on this panel. Now, these are, these are two end panels, and this angled three-quarter member actually goes to the bottom of that panel. Uh, just a little change I made. Uh, this angle is going to cause the bird feeder to feed to the front of the trough, which is at the left of this panel, by gravity. Uh, by, by keeping it on an angle like that, it'll, 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 it'll feed by itself. The two uh, three-quarter pieces house an eighth-inch piece of plexiglass that will end at that height, the, the two three-quarter members, again, they go all the way down to the uh, to the bottom of that panel. But the plexiglass ends at that height, and um, uh, that will, you know, show me how much, you know, <laughs> bird feeder is left in a, in a feed itself in the bird feeder. Here are the two panels, and it shows that one end is square, and the front end leans forward at a 15-degree angle. And uh, that'll be more... Uh, uh, clear as uh, the, uh, the the build goes, you'll see uh, better why that's the way it is, why I designed that. And this uh, last uh, photo just shows the base. The base is bigger all the way around than, than the two end panels. It, it sticks out on the two ends and uh, it, it also sticks in front and also in the back of this. And again, that'll be self-explanatory as you see the build complete. And this last photo shows, uh, sorry it's not a bigger photo, but uh, this is the bird feeder I've built in France and it's a lot more intricate, took a lot more time to do, and uh, a much better exotic wood that I used. Uh, and I'm going to just make a separate uh, video just on that one alone. I've got several photos of that build and I uh, thought it might be interesting to someone to, you know, see how that came about. <clears throat> Okay, on this little birdhouse, I've come to a uh, situation where, um, let me show you my design. This is one of two ends. The width is going to be roughly 22 inches. 
this here is going to be a piece of eighth inch plexiglass. I hope it's going to be strong enough. I'm not, I really want a quarter inch, but uh, I'm going to hold it with two three quarter by three quarter uh, little muttons on both sides. I'm going to hot glue it. Hopefully, it'll it'll stay. I'm, I'm concerned about the set on my bow. Anyways, we'll see. On the back, I'm going to have a piece slanted. Uh, there'll be two tops and be hinged so it can open up, fill it. In the back here, it's, it's going to be open. Uh, you know, it, it goes all the way down for the birds to. Uh, this is just a piece on the side that's going to extend past uh, the bottom, but this goes all the way down to the, to the very bottom. And um, this is going to be open so the, the birds can walk back in there, maybe it's bad weather or something. But the front will be where the, the, the food will come in. It'll, by gravity, it'll come down here to the very bottom and it'll be open, you know, accessible at the front here. Anyways, you'll see as we go along. I'm going to cut this piece. All right. Now, I've got the, the length for it, but how would you cut it is, and, and accurate, is what I want to show you right here. <coughs> this is the board we're talking about. That's the full length. A plain and square, both ends. It's 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 you know it's very very square. Length is good, but I need an angle, and I've got the angle marked right here. This is the first angle. It's the top angle. So how I'm going to cut that on my table saw? Let me show you how I'm going to do that. On the table saw, <coughs> I have this scrap piece of wood here, which actually was my story pole, but it's no big deal. And these are rockler uh, accessories that you drill a hole in the, in the wood and it helps you put a piece of scrap on, on the fence. It's really a good idea. Plus, I like always backing up my blades when I'm burying something like that in, in wood, especially when I'm working on a, on a shaper. I'll use a lot of MDF in that capacity. So, I traced the height that I want on the board, right? That's for my cutter. I've already set the angle with a um, angle divider. I, I set the angle. So now what I want to do is I want to bury this blade into the wood just at the face so that the face of this blade is cutting this angle. Right? And it actually go, it'll actually go like this. The angle is this way. And so I'll have that little piece of uh, board probably coming back here and be careful sometimes depending on how wide it is that <laughs> board back here can really shoot back here so there's other ways of stopping that but for right now we'll concentrate on this so what I'm going to do is I got, I'm going to lower my blade that's to about the height that I want now I've got to bring this blade in about eighth of an inch so I'm going to drop the blade all the way <laughs> I'm gonna, you can measure it, but I'm gonna, because I'm looking at the throat, I'm going to eyeball it about an eighth of an inch. And that should be pretty good. should be pretty close. Now I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to turn it on and raise the blade. Lock the fence. See what I have here. a little bit more, yeah. And that's right on the money. That's it. There you go. That's it. Nice and clean. 
and uh, just uh, one of the uh, techniques that uh, I'm hoping uh, you know you'll be able to come away with this and uh, I'm gonna do the same thing now to the bottom I have an angle at the bottom also <clears throat> as you can see I just cut this angle now I'm gonna readjust it to cut this angle again this goes all the way down to the bottom this is a, a a board that goes on the exterior of the so it's a it kind of give you a wrong impression this goes all the way down to the bottom and the feed so the 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 the, the, the food will come down into, into the hole there all right okay that's it okay uh, well it's all done uh, this is my concept of a uh, little bird feeder that I'm gonna just kind of wanted to throw together nothing elaborate again it's all made out of uh, scrap material in my shop here so you know some of it may still have some holes for I you know use it to, to drill uh, and put a screw in or something uh, I try to pick you know the best stuff that I had but a couple of them do have extra holes in it I'm not about to plug them and all that uh, uh, again, this is just something to throw together. Took me a day, uh, not even a whole day, and uh, you know I'm old, <laughs> so some of you guys go out quicker. Um, a couple of things uh, you'll to point out. Uh, you know, again, I've seen some beautiful concepts and designs of, uh, of bird feeders, very elaborate, uh, all different materials too, not only just wood, and the workmanship is just you know really, really good. There's some good workers out there. This again is just something that I've been thinking about. Um, you know, I, you can see my picture of uh, that I've uploaded of the one I made in France. There's a lot more work, a lot more detail on that. Uh, I gave some commentary on that about you know what it was and how it was done. This, uh, you know, I, I go in the back and sit. That's why I'm making this coffee mezzanine for my wife and I to go out and sit back there and have coffee in the morning and stuff. I got a, a little. Uh, a fountain out the birds come and invade in. I'm going to make a, a different one, a little bit bigger, because I have so many birds to come. And I have several bottles for hummingbirds, and I got some squirrels out there I kind of feed. I, I just enjoy sitting out there and just watching the old nature take its, you know, take its course there. And this is something that I've been wanting to do, been thinking about it, and finally I said, you know what, I, I'm at a point in my, in my cafe mezzanine where I've gotten some really intricate two, um, um, rails that I got to cut in a certain way and I just kind of little pose you know a little, 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 little rest it there so I thought I'd dress it by just kind of coming to the shop today and just throwing these, these things together let me give you a little rundown on it and again excuse me for the lighting I don't have you know the best lighting here I don't plan on going out and buying a lot of hardware for it it's just do the best I can uh, hope I can just describe it to you the reason why it's big is because you know I got enough to do. I don't want to have to feed this thing every 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 week. You know, I want to put enough in here to last maybe a month or so, maybe longer, hopefully, and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, the other thing is, um, uh, it's not out in the weather. It's going to be under my patio. These two members are going to go in between my four by sixes and attached to the four by sixes like that, <coughs> and. Um, It'll be outside, subject to you know humidity and whatnot, and wind, but no direct sunlight and absolutely no water. So, uh, again, you know, uh, that's one of the reasons why I built built it this way. And again, thinking about the birds and whatnot, you know, uh, uh, you know, my the one I had in France, uh, the birds would come under it uh, just when it was snowing a lot. Anyways, um, I have it's it's not symmetrical in that this section. Roof section is longer. Uh, you probably, I don't know if you really can see it, but there's a cavity in here. If you can see that panel, this panel here slopes this way. So there's actually like a cavity here, cavity here. So I, I've got another bar in here, and there's a space in there where they might want to come out of the weather. But it could be real hot, maybe make a nest, you know, who knows. It's just a real covered room there that if it's even real, real windy they could get out of the wind if they wanted to you know I mean I hope it don't, I don't sound silly but that's what I'm thinking um, here is where the, the food will go in the seeds 
and I know you can't tell, but this panel back here slopes forward. So it'll gravity feed the trough down here, which is the trough right here. Now, this plexiglass, it's only eighth inch. I wanted quarter, you know, but uh, I was concerned about the eighth inch have to have it with the weight of it, maybe pushing it forward. So what I did, I have these two three-quarter members on each side sandwiching the, the, uh, the eighth inch and keeping it up off the bottom a certain distance. And what I have is I drilled in the face of, of each of these, uh, uh, one of these members on each side, one hole large enough to put a finish nail through. So it's pinning that uh, eighth inch plexiglass so it won't move. So, you know, it won't move, won't pull out, so it's going to be okay. Um, the other thing is here, I got this, again, this 716 down in front for the birds to come or whatever, you know, and, you know, land there, do whatever, whatever you want. And the other thing is, is how I've got this, you know, I know I've got some small brass hinges around. I can find them. I looked three different times. I just couldn't find them. And I know I've got them. So I'm like, what the heck am I going to do? I don't want to go out in the shop, you know, and go, go buy just a couple of hinges. And I, I just didn't want to take the time to go out and drive. And I got to thinking, my uncle uh, in France, uh, the gardener, I mean, they all do gardening. He had a garden in the back of his house. And he also had a garden just uh, in the same village, but, you know, a few, he had to take his car, you know, a few, you know, about a mile or so down the road. Big, all by himself, dug, dug that thing by hand. And unbelievable. These guys, he was old. He was 70 in the 70s, you know, uh, when, I, when I was there. Anyways, I remember in his, they all had these little, little huts, you know, keep their tools, stuff, everything, get their coffee, whatever, and booze, whatever they do. And, and uh, he showed me uh, one time getting some tools out, this old toolbox, and this old toolbox came from his grandfather, his grandfather, he was seven, right? his grandfather. And cause they had the same, that same plot of ground for years through the, through, the, through the family, generations, I don't know how far back it goes. And when you opened it up, there's no hinges. And way back then, what you did, nails, pins, sometimes just dowels. This happens to be a pin. Uh, I say a pin, a finish nail. And here it is. This is what I have in there. Finish nail, just like that. I drill a hole about the size of number four pin, I guess what it is. And uh, I just laid it out, you know, where I would, you know, how I would, how I would pivot. And uh, put a nail in there. We let be there forever. <laughs> so, you know, you don't really need all this fancy hardware to do stuff. You really don't, you know. And uh, uh, it's a matter of how you lay out your your your, your two your two adjoining you know um, members so they don't hit or you know how they pass. And and uh, with this uh, in this particular situation. Uh, I just have a, a little bit of a gap on top, which is not a problem because it's, it's, it's not in the weather. If it was in the weather, I could do something different to where it wouldn't, uh, you know, it would actually be uh, covered and sealed, you know. There's ways of doing that. I didn't want to have to go through all that. Dude. I wanted very simple, you know, butt cuts and everything and nothing really fancy and uh, quick and easy. You know, slap it together kind of deal, which is what this is, just kind of slap together. And, uh, you know, it, it works. It'll never come out and it'll never get loose. Uh, it's just blocked. The nail has blocked in by these two members going up. Uh, so not, not a matter of whoever worked their way out. Smooth. Uh, sure outlasts me. <laughs> and um, that's it. Uh, I didn't bother rounding all the edges with a router. I did a little, little planing to make it, you know, somewhat flush and whatnot. And, you know, I had to make it square and everything. Both members match, so I did planing. I, I have my, my planes here. Uh, I've got my Lee Nelson planes, uh, four, five, seven. I've got an eight there. i got another seven down, down below. Uh, you know, I've got, you know, I've got tools, but i got, I got good tools. I buy from, you know, good, good companies, whatnot. Anyways, uh, that's it. Um, don't know what else to uh, say. If I've missed anything, you know, please, uh, you know, there's my email address at the bottom there. Uh, I don't have a website. Uh, you know, shoot me an email uh, if you want. If you've got a question or got a 
maybe a criticism, that's fine too, no problem. You know, I, I can take it. My, I have my buddy in Australia, Robert, he helped me with uh, some problems with my uh, videos and he, he was a very good, very good uh, suggestion, so I, I took him up on it. So uh, a good friend of mine down there, I wish I could go down. He's got a big plot of land down there, he's putting his fence up and he's about my age, you know, so uh, someday, who knows, maybe hit the lotto, I'll get to go see him, you know. Other than that, uh, that's it. My concept of a little, very simple bird feeder. Again, I use it all pine. Uh, I, I like that opposed to plywood because you know, I, I, in, in, a, in a piece of solid wood like this, I can I can go through end grain, whatever. You know, don't have to worry about plies that coming apart. And a lot of this plywood we get now come from China. It's terrible, you know. And of course, you buy a good quality plywood, it costs a lot of money. And this is simple. I'm doing a lot of pine anymore. I, instead of the exotic woods I'm used to working with, and you know, uh, especially a Baltic birch. I mean, that's just the best for for drawers and stuff. Uh, but you know, again, uh, the five by five sheets I got to have it sent to me. I don't have a truck to carry a odd size like that. And you know, I just I just work in, in pine now. It's, what the heck, you know? <laughs> just got a few more years left, and I'm probably going to kick. So just going to enjoy what I can while I can, and uh, that's it. Um, don't know what else to say other than, uh, you know, what struck me was just a uh, big, uh, big sack of uh, bird seed at Dewitt Center for seven bucks, and, um, and plus tax on it, you know. And I figured, what the heck, you know, I bought that yesterday, and I said, yeah, I'll finally do it. I've been thinking about it. So uh, this is it. Uh, again, I hope uh, I've helped some people with uh, some of the techniques uh, I did, uh, you know, doing it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, again, shoot me an email. And uh, with that, um, I'll just say uh, it's Christmas time out here. I'll say Merry Christmas to you. Uh, have a good day in the shop. Work safe. And as always, don't use any putty. Bye-bye. <laughs>